I name her that? I don't, you know, I don't know. It, it was a bad idea, and I'll tell you why. So Izzy is what I call her for short. Decides that um, that she's the boss. You know, it didn't take her long, even though when she, when she, I'm telling you, if I, I have a picture, I don't know where it is, but it, it's before cell, before I had a cell phone, so it's a physical picture, but I don't know where it is. <laughs> I could hold her in my hand. She was just that small, and by the time she got about half that size. <laughs> It was, it was Izzy's apartment. She, I paid the rent, but it didn't matter. So one of the things that she made sure that I did is I walked. She made sure she walked me. You know, so, <laughs> so there was no, uh, this dog, okay, pit bull, boxer mints. I told people, yeah, I'm okay. So I told people, <laughs> after I had this dog and gave her away, don't allow a boxer in a pit to mate. Unless you want a jogging buddy or something, or a, you know, a, a, something that can destroy your your uh, your yard, because she knows how to do that. Those, those they're good for that. They'll do that. <laughs> you know, but, I mean, this dog has so much ridiculous energy. It was incredible. She never got tired, and so we she so she made sure I walked with her. You know, so she's making sure I'm getting outside. Make sure I'm getting outside. I'm like, I, it, and then so we get to the point of the winter time when it's a little bit it was close to this time frame, I think it was about January or maybe December-ish, um, and when I got her, and then she grew super fast, she wants to go outside, you know, but what is it during this time frame? Not now, because of whatever, I don't know, global warming or, I don't know, North Korea dropped a, a bomb on us or something and made the weather change, I don't know what happened, but anyway, it's not been cold, right, throughout this time frame, but I'm talking about back in 2007, 2008, it was freezing. I was not, I did not want to go outside. I, I was that guy who would be like, I don't want to go outside, I'll hate the cold, I'm just gonna do something else, I can't wait till I can move to Florida or California or somewhere, that's all I would talk about. Now I got this dog and she wants to go outside and we're going outside. So in my mind though, I could have done a lot of different things. I could have thought about this in a lot of different ways. I could have been like, I'm just gonna force this dog to not go outside because she doesn't need to go outside, blah, 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 I could have made up some stuff in my mind, it's too cold, whatever. I didn't do that, I took her out, even though it was I'm talking about snowing sometimes, ice was on the ground, we're outside and I just decided, okay, I'm gonna start running with her because walking her didn't make any sense anyway because she wasn't walking, she was going, she was running anyway. So I said, okay, this is my jog time. <coughs> I'm, a, I'm a jogger, so I'm jogging with a dog. And I could have did a lot of different things with that, but what I, the number one thing I did is I looked at how I felt about the dog. I loved the dog, loved Izzy. And I wanted to do anything I could for her. I did not want to be a tyrant or a mean owner or whatever. Parent, pet parent, as they call it now. <laughs> so I, I wasn't going to be like that. I was going to take care of her. I was going to do what she needed to do. So I took her out. And what did I what did I learn from that? What did I build from that? I built the understanding that the cold is not my enemy. I realized I got to the point to I'm three, four times a week I would take her outside and it's freezing cold. And I realized, oh my God, I don't have to hate the cold. It just it just it was like this this epiphany that happened for me because I was <coughs> you know I'm running and I was actually not cold. I was warm anyway, because I was one thing I was running, and it really wasn't that bad anyway. It was just, you know, it was, but it, well, I, did, I wouldn't have probably never been able to say that, to say that I learned that lesson or that I built that kind of an understanding to where I understand now that the, the earth, and I started to do different things. This is before I even got to the School of Metaphysics, so, you know, it's like 2000, and I think six or seven-ish before I came to the school, because I actually had to give her away before I moved into the school for the first time. It's another story, but I realized that I, I that it wasn't my enemy, that the cold was not my enemy, that I could be uh, a person who lived in Oklahoma and went through a lot of different uh, weather patterns and lived and was happy about it. You know, so now I'm understanding a lot of different things about Earth, Earth Day, and stuff like that starts to come into my you know my uh, vision of understanding, right? So. The, the building of that was because of the dog, right? But, I, but what did I build? I built an understanding of myself that I could achieve something that was hard, even if, if I didn't really want to, there was still a way to do it. So if something's unpleasant or pleasant or whatever, you can still learn something from it. It's not always this search out for the things that you love, so that's the things that you need. So when you do that, that causes you to think about forgiveness a little bit, doesn't it? Because if you're doing something that you don't really want to do, then you're, or if you're living somewhere or you're interacting with somebody, most of the time it's a person, right? I bet 
you guys had it, uh, mostly it was a person. I bet nobody chose McDonald's or Monsanto or something, did you? <coughs> so when you're interacting with people, you have to realize this person is who they are, and I am who I am, and there's something that we can learn. So you turn, you turn around, you turn around on yourself, you look at them and you think to yourself, well, what is it that I can learn from this person? Why, or what is it, maybe you're not learning something directly from them, maybe you're learning something about life because you're interacting with them. You don't have to call them your teacher. You just look at them and say, hey, I, I, I'm changing because of this person. Is change bad? No. What does change do? Change builds understandings. Change builds a wall or a foundation or a roof or a window. What do you need? This is still with the stage situation, right? So you're somewhere, and now you got your foundation built, but like me, maybe you went back on yourself and you did it again. So you still got your foundation, your foundation didn't go away. Now you can build a wall the next time this happens. You can learn something. Now you build your wall, and you build another wall, and you build another wall, and you put a window in there, and you put a door in there so you can let people in because now you're a happy person. You're not always mad all the time, right? <laughs> <laughs> So, and then you get your roof. And now, you know, you built something that's valuable and useful. So that's what this is about. So for me, on a personal standpoint, personal scale, personal experiences, we have within the school, which I hope most everybody knows about, a thing called an intuitive report. So this is an okay Sosceles triangle, <laughs> um, which represents, let's see, we're going to call this the mind triangle, okay? So the mind triangle is a diagram, two dimensional diagram, which represents the mind, right? So within the existence of who we are, we have some things. We have the physical, and we have what you guys have probably heard before, all of you conscious mind. Okay, so we're going to put these on the same level. These are all represented by this. And then we have, I'll go this route with it first, dreams. Where do dreams come from? They come from this section right here, which is called the subconscious mind. Okay, so this is a diagram of, for words that you've heard before that you may have not thought about in this way, but okay. So that's what we have. So we have Conscious mind, everybody's in their conscious mind right now, everybody's asleep, so dreams, right? When you go to sleep, you're still existing, right? So where are you existing, where is your thinking, your thoughts, and your processing, and everything coming from is coming from your subconscious mind. You can also do other things with your subconscious mind. One of the things you can do with your subconscious mind is know truth. And this is not a uh, truth that is comparable, or uh, wafty, or maybe, this is the truth, okay? This is, this is, so you, within the subconscious mind, there is an experience, and even beyond, and this is something else up here, but we're not going to talk about that right now, right here, subconscious mind. So we have different levels. So this level, this level, this level, this level. So we have this level, we can number it seven, this level is six, this level is five, four, and three. Okay, so there is, in this level, a place where you can receive information, and if, I don't want to get run off too far on this, but I am going to talk about some intuitive reports, but you can receive information that is intuitive reports. We're actually going to have SIR meetings, right? Danny, what days are we going to have SIR meetings? Uh, they'll be on Sunday nights at 6. The next date isn't official yet. Okay, so we're going to have a, what's called a SIR meeting. So those of you who want to know more or experience more and understand more about what an intuitive report actually is, come to the SIR meeting. So basically, there's truth in the subconscious mind right around here in this area, and we can receive something that we in the school of is call intuitive reports. So it's a spoken or a written document, so to speak, that is truth. So it doesn't have anything that is um, drawn out from the conscious experience. There's no divisiveness. It's the only becomes divisive if you don't agree with it. If that makes sense. 
So what I have here are some intuitive reports. These are um, bits of information that I received and the way that we can receive them. And again, we can talk more about this at a different time. So one of my intuitive reports I don't have right now, but I learned something about karma when I got this intuitive report back in 2009. I learned that I have a karmic indenture regarding forgiveness. Karmic indenture, again, is my need to learn something. And it has to do with, specifically, the existence or the experience of forgive, or forgiving, or being in forgiveness. So I learned that that's a state of consciousness. And what forgiveness is a state of consciousness. So what my report said is that you have this, I asked this question, like I said, I was Scorpio, and I asked, why did I choose 10-24-1978 as my day of birth? That was my, my, my question to the, to the truth people. You know, I was like, what, you know, because I, I I wanted to know. I was like, why am I a Scorpio? This is so important. This has got to, this has got to mean something in my life. It's got, they're going to tell me why. Why? Why Scorpio? Because Scorpios are awesome. You know, it's like, well, I chose to be a Scorpio. So that's a good reason for that. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so so, so uh, the report asked, answered my question. And it said, there are many reasons for this. And I was like, many reasons? Yeah, that makes sense. And it said there, there was guidance within the inner levels, meaning six through three. There was guidance within the inner levels. And I was like, God, it's within the inner levels. What the hell does that mean? You know, because I, I didn't know, you know, what that meant. And then I said, we see that this one set this one on, on a pattern where he could alleviate his karmic indenture regarding forgiveness. Mind blown. I was like, what is going on right now? This has nothing to do with being a Scorpio, first of all. And I, I want to know what this means, you know. And so subsequently, I learned later on, because by asking questions, what that meant, and I got deeper and learned more about the school of metaphysics, what we teach, and understanding what karma really is. And so then I got to the point of like, okay, so forgiveness. I need to learn how to forgive. Now, for the word, it's, you can break it up into two pieces, for, right, and give. So you can even look at it as a reverse. Give for, right? So... What I needed to learn was something from that experience and that report that told me about uh, experience that I had in a past life that I, where I did not realize that a certain person was not my enemy. I made I, I made him my enemy, and that was how I went through life and died. And I needed to understand that that wasn't true. And so when I got to this lifetime. It was time for me to say, okay, you got to change that. So I was talking about the blocks, right? The blocks of space and time. So they could be an entire lifetime, or they could be uh, representative of an entire lifetime, or they could be little blocks, 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 and things, something you built in that lifetime, or the whole life could have been just about this one thing. Or like your life now, though, the difference between who, where we are now, all of us, because you walk through this door, is that you're desiring the acceleration of consciousness. You're desiring to understand and grow and change and believe in something more than what you've been taught or what has existed before. You're a, a harbinger for this kind of information or this kind of understanding or this opportunity that you're going to present to yourself, first of all, in the embodiment of people like me or in paper or on a board or something is going to happen where you're going to desire something and you're going to see something and it's going to teach you something if you listen and you be receptive. So a, a lot of people aren't like that. What I just said would be like weird and goofy to some people. You know, so realize that you're in that percentage of people that are changing the world by doing that. And believe that. So you move your through your life like that, right? Now this forgive. So you so you giving for something, right? That's give for. That's the that's the that's what forgiveness is. The English language is odd, isn't it? I mean, everybody knows that. Joe, you're a teacher, so I know you, <laughs> you know, relate to that. The English language has a lot of different words and stuff. It's like, what? Why did we? That, why did we just say this? How did this come about? You know. So, so that's what I'm talking about with the blocks again. So, the understanding of the word. Just look at it like that. It's not one thing, but it's a, it's an under, it's, it's an, it's an action that you can do. But that's not the final point of it. The point of it is to learn something. And when you learn something about giving for, then it's like a state of consciousness. It's a whole different way of being that you become. 
and you can learn how to do this on a rapid scale, quickly, even faster than it took me the 20 minutes. Sometimes it <coughs> didn't take that long, but I don't even remember the last time I needed to do that. So recently I've had experiences mostly of learning about people, realizing gratitude, realizing that I need to be generous, realizing that I need to be thankful, and experiencing something within myself that would cause me to interact with this person or this thing differently. So that's where, that's like the, uh, the Olympics of forgiveness. You know, when you can do that really, really quickly, you don't think about it. But when you think about, or when you, the thing that I talked about earlier with the blocks, you set, you're setting yourself up for something, right? You're creating something, you're building something, you're learning something. But really and truly, when do you stop and think about that? Like, how much do we really think about, well, how many times did this happen and why am I here when once something occurs? Like, if you are on the highway and somebody, you know, cuts you off, well, you get mad, right? And some people don't get mad, though. So the difference within this person who got angry and this person who did get angry is a state of consciousness. So does that make sense? So, you're, so you can build it in one day. Maybe you wake up in the morning and you know, birds are singing and you know, your, your spouse brings you breakfast in the morning and you're just like, oh my God, having a great day. So, so you're driving down the street and somebody cuts you off and you're like, man, that person must have been in a hurry. I bet their wife is in the hospital or something. That's it. It's cool, you know. Or maybe you, you know, you run them down and you know, run them off the road and get in, in your trunk and get your axe and come after them, right? So, but what's the what's the difference? <laughs> the difference in those in those two situations is a state of consciousness. You know, what are you doing with the axe anyway? But um, so, so, so forgiveness. That's a, it becomes a state of consciousness. So you're giving for something. What did I give to Izzy for? I gave <coughs> really and truly. I learned that whole thing because I love that damn dog. <laughs> you know, that's it was because of love. You know, and I, so you can. That's an easy one, right? Sometimes you have to dig, though, um, and I can't do that for you. You know, so consider this person or the thing that you thought about earlier, and figure out how. What, what is a, a small, tiny, itsy, bitsy, bitsy, tiny, tiny? It's a tiny step you can take. You know, what is that? You just take that tiny step. Start right there. And then take another tiny step. And then keep taking a tiny step. <laughs> Until you get prepared to take a big step. Um, or if you want to take a big step, take a big step. Hey, be a game changer. So, in that report, that was my first report I'd ever gotten. And it said, yeah, I'm coming to get forgiveness. I'm like, what are you talking about? So then it took time, 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 time goes by. Bam, okay, now I understand. Okay, I, need, I really need to do this. So, hey, what's, what's up now? Terrence gets another report. Yay, Terrence gets another report. He's getting another intuitive report. So he's going to ask more questions. And what is the only question I wanted to ask was about forgiveness. I was like, what in the world? How am I doing with this forgiveness thing? And so it said that I needed to, I asked the question, got another answer. It said that I basically needed to look at my life in steps and see the things that, that, that how was I valuable? It, talk, it, it, it basically made me say, okay, what do you, or made me think, <coughs> what is it? And it wouldn't give me these things, because I, you know, said, you know, not even anything specific. It just said there's, a, there's things, there's an existence that makes this person valuable. And what he needs to do is figure out what those things are and give. And I was like, oh, all right. There's still a little, you know, a little bit. Well, I'm, I'm looking for a direct answer. So I didn't get a direct answer. But the, the reality is I was trying to fight in that past lifetime. I was trying to fight this person. I wanted to, they were my enemy. Fight, fight, fight. And so as I'm coming through this lifetime, what I was learning is to stop being, an, and I'm not, I'm not a warrior anymore. You know, maybe I have been, but I'm not now. Now I'm different. My existence and my experience is different. And it has a lot to do with something a little bit softer, love. So the realization of what love is and what it means for me is what I had is what I have been learning for a long time. And it didn't start right there, right? It didn't start when I got that report. It was my whole lifetime. So whatever we're doing in our life, it starts when you're born. So there was also some some thoughts that came to me recently <clears throat> that the best way of saying this is. What happened to me when I was a child was not my fault. So if I'm experiencing now something that happened to me in the past, like it's really happening now, and I'm blaming people who were there, people who supposedly were the perpetuators of this horrible situation, like a divorce, and I don't realize it, blocks, right? I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't stop and say, well, 
you know, I didn't stop and blame or stop and realize <coughs> that I'm blaming somebody for something that's going on in my life now, my parents or whoever I wanted to blame, my grandparents, whatever. Uh, the businesses that my father worked for, you know, whatever, whoever I can think to blame, right? I, th there was this, this section or this existence of blame that was, that was present. And so moving through my life, I learned that, that, I, that enemies aren't real. I'm not the only enemy. The way that I'm thinking, the way that I'm attacking this thing is how I'm attacking really in reality myself. So there's no, so forgiveness isn't, it's not even, it's not that, it's an, it is an action. It's a, it's, but it's not really even an action, it's a happening because of the state of consciousness. So the moving of my lifetime, I get to the point where I receive that, and I say, okay, forgive karma, karma connection regarding forgiveness, ask another question you need to give. Okay, well, what do I need to give? I don't really know my skills or whatever, things of that nature. I start thinking about what can I actually give or what, how big is that? How big is giving? You know, how, who do I give to? Do I, you know, join PETA or become a, a, a senator, you know, or, uh, I don't know, a teacher? Who, who am I giving to? So the, the reality is that it was just about surrender. So whenever I was able to realize that I don't need to fight anymore, then whatever happened or whoever came along, or whatever was going on, I could, under, I, could, I could just give. I was open. I wasn't restrictive anymore. So the reality of it was that I, that I was learning surrender. And so from 9... 2009 to 2015, I got maybe two or other reports. And then another report I got, that third report, was what we call a health analysis. Very, very important first sentence of a health analysis. Because it tells you, pretty much, it sets you up to get you ready for whatever's coming after this. This could be, a, you know, these, some of these reports can be four or five pages long, three pages, two pages, one page. But it doesn't matter. That first sentence is going to set you up for whatever's coming after that. Right? First sentence of this report that I got in, uh, what was, what's that, nine, ten, six, about six years later, was we see that this one has reached a point of surrender. And man, when I heard that, I, was, I could not have been a more happier person. Because I, 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 cause you don't, like I'm saying, you don't know, really. People don't take time. If you did take time to stop and look and, and examine everything in your life, you probably wouldn't have much of a life. That probably would be all you would be doing. So the acceleration of consciousness is important, right? So you gotta live your life, but you can live your life in big and longer blocks. You can take, you can take time to think about what do I wanna create, who do I wanna be, and create a long block of that. So then when this thing happens, it's not such a big deal anymore, right? So that's what I was doing, but I didn't know that. So I'm telling you, maybe you already know that, but now I'm telling you, think, you can think about your life like that. But what's the difference too, though? The situations, the things, the people, they're not me, they're not mine. It's yours, right? So I don't know what you're going through or how long you've been angry about something or whatever. So I hope you can use that. So I get to the point, bam, okay, now I get this report and it says that I've reached the point of surrender. So that's a state of consciousness. That's the first thing on this report. That's important, man. <laughs> you know, that's huge. Because within the question that is asked in order to get the report in the first place, it asks about things that you have a need to heal. It says, what, do you, what is this one need? The, what, what are the things that's wrong with this guy? And is, how's he thinking that's getting him in trouble? How's he using his emotions that's not working out for him? You know, how's he being the physical life that he's living? What is he, you know, what is he doing that's not working out? We know what he wants, so please tell us, give us some information on how we can help this guy. And the first sentence is that this one's reached the point of surrender. That meant that I was doing pretty damn good as far as that goes. So the <coughs> movement of my consciousness was going towards surrender. So now I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to do something about this. So I, what that told me was that I had really got to the point where I had built a, a, a foundation, a wall, a window, you know, maybe a, a half a ceiling. You know, I, I, was, I was getting there. I was doing, you know, I was changing that whole, I was achieving the goal that was set with the first report to understand and realize forgiveness. So I thought it was pretty good. I was pretty happy about that. And the way that that came about was from three, three keys that you can use. And you have, but it, these are your times where, like I was saying earlier, you don't always think about this, right? But after this lecture, maybe you can do that.
This is what it said for me, but I'm, I'm not gonna say that this is universal for every person in the world, but I'm just gonna write this like this because it could be different for different people. So number one, practice generosity. Number two was um, understand gratitude. And number three, to vanquish the monster, is be thankful. So, how many people in the world don't understand thankful? How many people in the world can't spell thankful? <laughs> How many people in the world don't understand thankful or in this room at least? You guys know what being thankful is. So that's why it says B. How do you be thankful? You say thank you. You write thank you. <clears throat> but you can do it more than once. And you can do it different ways. And you can do it for different people. And you can do it a hundred thousand times a day. And you just say and why? You know what you can do? You can Google the person who invented paper, if you don't know who that is. And you can find their ancestor and write them a letter. That's and say thank you. Isn't that crazy? That would be you know, that's kind of crazy, right? At the same time, though, it's a, it would be a big deal to them. <coughs> they probably would cry. That, so with that, that's a big ball of energy, man. So that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. To do, if you if you feel something so, I'm not gonna lie. I don't like Monsanto. Monsanto got what a thousand jobs, maybe three, four, five, six, maybe I don't know. Thousands of jobs, billion dollar company. It's feeding a lot of babies. So maybe I can think about it a little differently. You know, that's a big deal for me. So looking at things. As, a, as a, what is the best or the most that I can handle or that I can do, that's how you vanquish the monster. So that's one way of being thankful. That's as simple, but it, you can leave here, you can say thank you to everybody here. I was thinking about maybe doing like a little thing where I would have you guys look at each other and say thank you, gratitude, or something like that, but you can handle that yourself. They're all adults. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and you're a human! Human adults, good people. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying gratitude. That's a little, I mean, what is gratitude? You know, you're being grateful, right? So it's, but it's not, in a, some people would think that thankfulness and gratitude were the same thing, wouldn't they? But they're obviously different because truth. This came from truth. It broke them up. So obviously they're not the same thing. So understanding gratitude is something that I can do or that I needed to do or that I can continue to do and continue to learn from by understanding it, seeking out the opportunities to really understand what is gratitude. You know, being grateful. So one thing you can ask yourself, one really good way to do this. Okay, let's do it. What are you grateful for? Um, one thing. Home. Home? Home. What are you grateful for? I just steal yours. Yeah. <laughs> um, How about sweet. this? Wait a minute. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Everybody, one at a time. What are you grateful for? Go. I'm grateful for heartache. For what? Heartache. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for him. Awesome. Oh, I was going to say my wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you? See, that's the thing. Yeah. If, if, if it's a big energy field, then it's re, it's, yeah. that's the best thing about it. The bigger it is, the better. So if you're grateful for Linda, that's a good yeah. thing. Nothing wrong with that. What are you grateful for? Opportunity for learning. What are you grateful for? I'm grateful for everyone sitting in this room. Casey, my dog. Nice. I'm grateful for being able to pick my friends. Ooh, I like that. I'm grateful for music. All right. I'm grateful for learning all the lessons in my life and everything and being here with Lily Tomlin. Okay. I'm grateful for love. Awesome. So now, everybody here who isn't, this is, I didn't count you guys, but there's how many people here? 
So now you've got something else to think about. When you say to yourself, gratitude, okay, this is what I'm grateful for. Now you've heard and you feel and you're in the experience, you're in the energy field of more gratitude. So I think this is probably helping you to understand gratitude. Even by osmosis or just listening, okay? So then practice generosity, okay? So now that's an action, right? It said, it's saying do something, practice generosity. So something very simple is something I've done before, but something I just did now, I picked up her pen. That was me practicing generosity. And I snapped off quick. I you know, went and did it quickly. She could have picked it up herself, right? But I, I caught it before she picked it up. So <clears throat> I'm walking through a parking lot one day, and this guy, actually McDonald's parking lot, which I put them on about the same level as Monsanto, <laughs> walking through a McDonald's parking lot. And um, the little tag on one of the boxes of a person getting in his car flies off in the wind. He looks at it about 10 feet away from him. It's about 15, 20 going in the wind. He's like, I ain't going to get that. It's a piece of paper. Kept, kept doing his thing. I was about the same distance away, but at a different angle. And I looked at it, and I was walking, and I was like, damn paper up here. And so I, I went about 20 feet, stopped the paper as it was blowing in the wind, picked it up and put it in the trash. That's a practice of generosity. I don't, I'm not trying, I mean, I'm not perfect, obviously, because I got mad at the lady last night, right? <laughs> but how many times have you guys done something like that? Mm -hmm. Just something to think about. And you know, but you, you, do you think about forgiveness when you do that? No. You know what? You heard me say it, but it don't matter now. Don't worry. Don't. Who cares? I said it. But now just do it. And then when you see Fred at work, you know, then maybe you won't be so mad at Fred all of a sudden. Just because you picked up a piece of paper for somebody else. Isn't that great? So there's actions, there's thoughts, there's just simple words. I mean, how many other ways can you do that? There's, the, okay, these people down the street um, on Christmas, uh, over by, um, on Manchester, um, across the street, basically, from uh, Quick Trip. Man, they're back in the corner, way back somewhere, where it's like, you don't even know there's a house back there. But what do they do on Christmas? Boy, they lace that house up, man. Yep. You can't <laughs> miss it. I mean, every y'all seen that, right? Uh -huh. Every yeah. inch of that house is covered in something Christmas. It is a good, it's a nice looking house. Like, yeah. at the stoplight, and I'm like, oh my god, this is all. I'm glad I'm sitting there. Right, at the right. You know? I walk by there, I look, and I'm like, I just feel good. I'm like, this. Maybe you're an uh, atheist or something. I don't know, and you don't you don't care about Christmas. But I bet when you see that freaking house lit up like that, you're happy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's it's just it's cool. It's nice. It's awesome. And that's a I think that's the merits <coughs> of them to do that because they're not doing it for themselves. They don't. They live in the house. Nobody would do that. You know, <laughs> for themselves. They're doing it so other people can see it. What are they going to do? Sit out 